Oh, it's take two of my live video. I apologize. Um, maybe this makes no sense to you because you're watching this played back, but I just tried to come on live. Some workers are outside the office here in the conference room I'm in. They needed to come in for a second. Obviously, at the start of my video, I didn't want to make them wait. Long story short, I just had to kill a live video about 90 seconds into it. Anyway, we're here for round two. Yes, that's correct. Uh, discussing Logan Couture, the announcement that was made yesterday as San Jose's new captain. And clearly when Joe Pavelski departed this summer, you knew that a, a choice was inevitable and a new direction was inevitable. But similar to when Pavelski was named the last captain by Pete DeBoer, Logan was the obvious choice. And at the same respect, he was the best choice. Sometimes the obvious choice is also an easy choice. It just, it, it fits too well, and, and maybe it's not long-term, but it's, it's easy to get done with and move on. I really feel like the obvious choice and the best choice, those two things need to go together when describing, uh, describing Logan Couture as this next captain. Now, it's no disrespect to any of the other members of the leadership group in San Jose, because you look at all the alternate captains, and Eric Carlson, he's worn the C before. Joe Thornton, he's worn a C before. Uh, Brent Burns obviously plays a huge role with this team in terms of producing on the ice and also personality on and off the ice. And I think it's very cool that, that Tomas Hurdle was include, uh, included in this group as well, too. Not to mention, there's even a layer of players beyond that. Uh, Evander Keane, Martin Jones... Mark Edward Vlasic. I could go on and on. There's a whole another level of players that aren't even wearing a letter this season that could easily be in those positions. So that, again, is the luxury of San Jose. So many different players for these official opportunities. But Logan, you know, right at the top, it's, it's just pretty cool that, that he's getting this recognition. Ten full seasons with the Sharks. A homegrown product. Spent some time in Worcester. Um, I've been fortunate, fortunate enough to basically watch his whole career unfold. And I think that also is, is what people are saying is neat about seeing Hurdle getting one of the A's on his sweater, is that here's two guys that you, you essentially saw their very beginnings. And now here they are, you know, officially as team leaders in, in terms of what they've done on the ice, but also, you know, that they are the, the faces and voices of this Sharks team. Uh, so again, I don't need to go into all the stats, and you've already heard all this news come out. Um, you know, I think from from talking to the players and talking to Pete DeBoer yesterday, one of the the biggest things from Pete is just that, you know, this makes so much sense for a guy who who talks the talk as Logan does and walks the walk. I say talks the talk, and it, it's not that he goes overboard or, or or chirps anybody in a ridiculous manner. It's more of a responsible talk. When you think about being a captain of any professional sports team, but especially in the NHL. And there, there's a lot of winning nights, but there's some losing nights as well, too. And on those losing nights, you know, accountability, it, it comes at a premium. And I think we can all agree that nobody does it better than Logan Couture in being honest, but yet respectful uh, of how describing when things aren't going right um, and really putting fans in a sense of, um, understanding, you know, where things are at, his perspective on them, and the honesty of of how things can hopefully get better. So it's very much appreciated. I know in our business, and I know from the fan perspective, you know, what Logan Couture does kind of in the lowest moments uh, that actually makes him a team leader. Now, the high moments, those are also easy to describe. You're talking about Couture who, well, you know, let's go right to the postseason. And this is what Pete DeBoer was alluding to in the postseason – I mean, Logan in 110 plus games is almost a point per game player. And then there's that stat, which is so crazy here, 48 goals for Logan Couture since the 2010 playoffs, which were his first in the NHL, his 48 goals. And he obviously he's been in most of these playoffs. There was a year where he and the Sharks were not in it. There were also some quick exit years, but the only guy with more playoff goals since 2010 is Alexander Ovechkin. So yeah, Couture has more than even Sidney Crosby. And I know you're going to start talking about Stanley Cups. I get it. Um, but it just goes to show you what, what Logan has been able to do in the biggest moments. Um, I have some sound clips to play. And again, I'm, I'm experimenting with this big time. 
Um, but here is what Logan said in regards to kind of how it all came together. Um, well, I, like any off season, I talked to uh, to Doug multiple times throughout the the summer, and he keeps me updated as well as other guys on the team on on what he, he's thinking and um, the game plan for for our team. Our team, and um, you know, I found out that we weren't bringing Pavs back, so I knew that uh, our captain was going to be mo- moving on and. Um, I talked to, to Pete and got the idea that uh, I was a candidate uh, for it, and uh, that's how it happened, I guess. Uh, I think uh, very fortunate here in San Jose. We've got so many so many leaders, guys that have been captains before, and it's such a, a veteran um, group of guys that can be leaders. So uh, I don't see it as just an individual. Um, it's just a letter. It's just an, uh, goes on one jersey. But there's so many leaders on our team that we're we're going to be. Uh, by committee, I guess. And even in choosing. And there you hear me asking more questions. Uh, I'll play you some more clips in a second, but that, that just goes to show you, you know, and I think too, as much as there is a captaincy, there was a captaincy to be decided and there is a captaincy to be had by Logan Couture. I think what he understands already, just like Joe Pavelski understood the last time around, you're, you're just officially the guy. You're officially the leader. But there are so many other default leaders in that room, um, which makes it easy. And I would also say it it makes it difficult to a certain degree. Um, I don't have the quote here, but I can basically paraphrase how Brent Burns said it best. You know, in describing the Sharks in terms of life stages of the players, you've got some guys who are barely old enough, barely legal to have a drink here in the United States. You also have a 40-year-old who's very deeply married and, and deeply into to being a father in Joe Thornton. So it, it's the variation, right, of, of different players uh, from different walks of life and different age groups. And Bernsey used the word liaison, which I thought was the perfect way to describe what any good captain of the San Jose Sharks has to be. It's what Joe Pavelski did a good job of, kind of relating to everybody. And I know that Logan is going to do well at that too, partially because he's been around for so long and he's seen how it's worked before with Rob Blake and Joe Thornton and Joe Pavelski, but also because he is that kind of middle age at now 30 years old that he can understand the young guys, understand the older guys just a little bit. And also, too, I think security is gigantic for Logan, right? Job security, team security. He's got the long-term deal right now in San Jose. So, um, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have to worry about the clock ticking on anything. He knows he's going to be around. Um, there's some comfort for him in this role that, that he's going to want to be around it for a while. Going back to what I was saying earlier, and I just wanted to cue up the clip here. Um, again, no surprise in the A's the assistant captains that were handed out um, other than, you know, there could have been even more. Like I said, I just named three, three other players I think could have been in that group. Um, but the one that a lot of people are talking about is Tomas Hurdle. So here's what Logan said about Tomas getting an A. Yeah, I think that was uh, one of the easiest decisions. I- and by the way, I should clarify, he's talking about Pete DeBoer and Doug Wilson. It was an easy decision for them um, to make Tomas part of this leadership group. Yeah, I think that was uh, one of the easiest decisions, I, I think, for, for the coaching staff and, and for Doug. Um, <clears throat> see the way he plays, how much he cares, how he wants to win. He's, uh, he's willing to do anything to win, and uh, that's someone that uh, other players look up to. Um, you know, he's, he's been so, so much fun to play with for, for six years now, and he's grown a lot from a, a kid that came over here that didn't speak any English to... Uh, willing to learn the, the language and put in all that time just to, to be able to, to talk with his teammates and coaching staff means a lot. So yeah, L- uh, Logan Couture there talking about Tomas Hurdle. That's very cool. Um, let me see what else I have here on this. Um, one more thing about Logan as the captain. You know, it, it's, it's an obvious human element of sports. When you get a new contract, when you get a new role, when you're promoted to anything, and why even stop at sports, really? I guess this truly applies to life. Anytime you're put in a in an elevated situation, there is kind of that subconscious assumption that you need to do more. You've been bumped up, and now you need to kind of respond to that and and adjust accordingly. But in reality, you, know, you think about this, Logan was made the captain because people think he'll do a good job, 
by being who he's always been. And so I kind of I kind of floated that out there to Logan, you know, and I, I think my question, I don't have that here, but I think my question to him was something to the effect of, um, I'm going to guess with you that nothing changes. And, and here was his response. No, that's true. And nothing, nothing at all. I'm not going to be who I'm not. I'm not going to all of a sudden be screaming and yelling it in the dressing room because um, that's just not me and that's fake. I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can on every shift I, I play, um, try to do everything I possibly can to help us win hockey games and just be who I am. Which again is not surprising, which is also refreshing that he's already got that mentality. So again, um, not a surprise to, to pretty much anybody I talked to down there that Logan was the guy. Here's another thing that I failed to mention before, which, which I do think is important the timing of this announcement. Now, you may remember, well, let's go back to the last two captains of the Sharks and when they were announced. Uh, when Joe Thornton was announced, I had the opportunity to be at this practice. It was in Stockholm, Sweden. It was the last practice before the regular season started. It was San Jose opening their season in Europe against the Blue Jackets for two games. But, you know, there was a little bit of speculation. Was it going to be Joe Thornton? Was it going to be Dan Boyle? And it turned out to be Jumbos, who Todd McClellan and Doug Wilson went with. And obviously, Joe held that role for years. Um, but it was the timing of it because they wanted to see, they wanted to let camp play out. And it wasn't like they were being cruel to anybody. It was, there was some significance with the timing of that for the Sharks back then. They wanted to wait it out. They wanted to play it out. And it was the same thing when Pete DeBoer came in, um, that Joe Pavelski got the captaincy right before the season started. Uh, it was not something that was, uh, you know, right out of training camp. This is how it was going to be. Getting DMs here on the uh, on the computer. Apologize. And a loud motorcycle or cars behind me on the street. Um, but the timing of this, just going back to, to Logan, they wasted no time this time around in making him the captain the day before training camp. And part of it was because we had media day down there yesterday. Players are taking their, their photos and their headshots and their hero shots. And they wanted to have that C on his sweater for everything to be documented all season long. And the only way to do that is if you announce him as the captain yesterday morning, like they did. Um, so I think it's cool because in camp, that's not a question. There's, there was not a competition, I don't think, but you know, there's nothing to be said now the rest of camp in that regard. The team has basically made that a non-issue. I think it just goes to show you um, solidarity you know, in, in the decision. And I, I think the timing of it actually says something without saying anything at all. Um, the leadership group. Let me, let me go back to this. I, I kind of glossed over it a little bit before, but I wanted to go back to it. I, I do think it's cool that Joe Thornton is still in there. I feel like so long as he's a shark... Uh, that extra letter on his sweater is something important. Um, and by the way, it's, it is my understanding that the way it works in the NHL is you get one player wearing the C and three players wearing an A. Or like the Sharks had a couple years ago. Remember that year there was no captain? Um, or you can have four A's that, the, that can all be out there at the same time. So this is interesting to me that there's one C and four A's in that maybe it's going to rotate. Um, and I should have asked that question yesterday, but I also didn't want to ask it yet um, because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not for certain if, it were actu if that's actually been decided yet. Um, but obviously, I'm pretty sure that's going to have to be dealt with and you know, they'll figure something out, whether it's uh, portions of the season or just rotating on a continual basis. But but yeah, Joe, obviously in for me, former captain of the team. I mean, I do think that is pretty cool that number one, he's still around for many different reasons. And also that he is still, you know, recognized as one of the most important guys in that group. And, and if you're around them, no question he is. He draws your attention in. He's the life of the party that is the San Jose Sharks. Um, giving Carlson a letter, you know, and I think if you go back to, if this were last year and they had just acquired him all over again, uh, too soon. And that's weird to say, right? Because he's been a captain in Ottawa and clearly, you know, what his pedigree is. Um, we can have a whole separate video and conversation about, uh, his season last year and hopefully what it translates into this year and being healthy. But, 
you know, if if this were last year, I would I would honestly tell you maybe it's too soon to give a new player this uh, this recognition and this opportunity. But you know, now that he's signed long term, he chose to stay. Um, He's been a captain before as well. He brings a whole different vibe and and probably viewpoint with his different experiences and coming up over the years on a, on a totally different side of the the continent. So I'm interested to see how that works, but I also think that's a very good decision there. Um, I kind of already talked about Hurdle. You heard what Logan said about Hurdle. It's just so cool to see uh, the young kid, like he said, who barely spoke any English, and I can attest to that. Some of the first interviews um, he ever did, uh, I was part of, and it was uh, he was trying, he was trying, but it was difficult. And as I joke with him every year, I'm joking, but I'm serious. Like your English is getting so much better and better every year because yeah, he's around it more, he's using it more, and and yeah, he's put in hard work um, to to mingle with the guys, so to speak, and, and speak everybody's language, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, and then Brent Burns, you know, like I said before. Um, one of the biggest offensive point producers on the team. You could argue that in the same way the offense used to go through Joe Thornton, and simply because he spent all those minutes out there, all that power play time out there, um, you could argue that that the offense goes through San Jose's defensive point players, Brent Burns obviously being one of those, and Carlson sometimes too. But you know, for the last several years, 88 has been the guy that has fueled that offense. So... Um, it's that combined with, like I said, you go to any of, of the Sharks road games and you just see how loved Brent Burns is as a, as a player, as a character um, across the league. So, And as well, he's been around long enough in San Jose um, since, what, the 2011 season. So, you know, it's, it's crazy how the years catch up on you and you think about uh, Burnsy and his longevity in San Jose. So anyway, that's what, more than 15 minutes on this conversation. Again, um, you know, I made videos this past summer saying why Logan should be the guy, and now he is the guy, and I don't think any of us were truly surprised. Um, but now that it's all it's all said and done, look, it brings a lot of other questions about the team and the season and where things can go. Um, you know, I, I, I think, and talking to some of the players and coaches, I think the biggest theme of this season is not so much what the veteran players are going to bring to the table. I think that is a pretty known commodity. I actually think what's going to be the, the, the pivot and the difference maker are what the young guys can bring, how often they can bring it, and what guys are going to be trusted on a regular basis. And I know everybody's going to ask, what are your, what are your uh, line combos and D pairings? Like that, We're not even close to that yet. Um, and again, too, I know it's been said, but I, I would not read into a lot of the early experiments because I feel like that's what a lot of things are at this stage. Uh, everybody's got an idea going in, but eyes and ears in a couple weeks, uh, they might change things in a small way or they might change things drastically. So um, yeah, we can we can definitely do another video looking ahead at this season. But as for tackling the topic of, of Logan Couture, again, just a a player that is a fan favorite. And I think a lot of people are happy about this. Um, and we should also just mention Joe Pavelski, I guess, here last to close it off. Um, so many people said kind things about Pavs yesterday. And, um, you know, I, I just feel like if there's one guy to take these shoes that, that he leaves empty, it is Logan. And I also think, you know, if Logan can do what Pavelski did, and look, we can rewind and go back to Owen Nolan days or Rob Blake or, or, or Patrick Marlowe days, whoever you want to name, you know, the Sharks captains have, have generally done a really good job in at least keeping groups together over the years and setting good examples. And, um, you know, if you're going to grade Joe Pavelski in his years here uh, wearing the C, the marks have to be pretty high, which is a, it's a nice compliment. Um, but I have every confidence that, that Logan Couture can, you know, keep things going and, and not lose not lose a stride at all with the way things are going. So you know what? Uh, a team that made the final four of the playoffs last year, and uh, you just you got to hope that they keep knocking on the door and that one of these years they go to the final two again and that they're the last one standing eventually. All right, uh, because I've never really done this on my phone before, I'm not exactly sure how to sign off. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play you one more, 
One more thing to get you excited for the uh, for the regular season coming up. Since the Sharks are opening up their first two games, a home and home against Las Vegas, I asked Logan about, um, right, it's automatic now that the Sharks and Golden Knights are rivals, right? Yeah, right. yeah, oh yeah, no questions. Uh, you play a team this many times in a short span, the hatred is real. Um, they're, they're a very good team. That's what happens when, when there's two very good teams going at it multiple, multiple times. So um, it's going to be another, another fun year in our division. Uh, those guys are, are very good again. I think we're going to be a top team again. So we'll, we'll see a lot of them. There you go. In fact, the Sharks and Golden Knights will see each other five times, if you can believe it, uh, before the Christmas break of the NHL. That does it for this video. I appreciate it. Subscribe and like it if you will. And uh, until next time, I'm Brody Brazil. And yes, that is my real name. See you later.